Hello and welcome to another episode of Photography 101. Today we are going to talk about the different sizes of sensors you can get in cameras and the difference between a focal length and an effective focal length. In an episode I am calling, What is all this crop? So these two cameras look pretty much the same, but there is one major difference. The sensor in this camera is physically a lot bigger than the sensor in this camera. So what difference does that make? The larger sensor camera is what we call a full frame camera. The reason it's so called is because the sensor is 35 millimeters across by 24 millimeters up, which happens to be the exact same size as the old film that was used in cameras. This smaller sensor camera, however, uses what we call an APS-C sensor, or a cropped sensor. So what difference does having a smaller sensor make on an image? Well, any lens that's on a camera has a physical focal length. So for example, the physical focal length of this lens is 50 millimeters. Now this is designed to fit onto a full frame camera body. So the image that it projects out of the back is big enough to cover the area of a 35 millimeter sensor. Now the sensor in this camera is 60% smaller than a full frame camera. As a result, an image that's taken with a full frame sensor such as this, if you were to try and take the same image with the same lens on a crop sensor, it would cut into that sensor 60%. As a result, you would only actually get this. This is what we call a crop factor because the camera is cropping into what we can actually see from the lens. So this is where an effective focal length comes in. So if we take a 50 millimeter lens and we put it onto a body with a crop factor of 1.6, we multiply those two together and we get 80 millimeters. By effective focal length, we mean that shooting a 50 millimeter lens on a crop sensor body such as this gives us the same angle of view that using an 80 millimeter lens on a full frame camera produces. So any time that you're shooting with a crop sensor camera, you have to bear in mind that you need to multiply whatever focal length of lens you are using by the camera's crop factor to work out what you're actually going to see. You can buy lenses that are designed specifically for crop sensor cameras. However, that same crop factor still applies to that. So for example, quite a popular lens for full frame cameras is something like this 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Now put this on a full frame camera and you will see 16 to 35 millimeters. However, if you try and mount that on a crop sensor camera, you're going to see more like 25 to 56 millimeters. But you can buy crop sensor lenses that are more like 10 to 18 millimeters. But that doesn't mean that this lens can see a wider angle than this lens because this is designed only for crop sensor cameras, which means you have to automatically multiply that focal length by 1.6. So it gives you an effective focal length of 16 to 28. That means that shooting this lens on a crop sensor and shooting that lens on a full frame are going to give you exactly the same field of view. So let's take something like the Nikon P900 bridge camera. This thing is an absolute gem for showing you what effective focal length means. This is a 900 pound camera that's advertised as having an effective focal length of 24 to 2000 millimeters. By comparison, the biggest lens that you could possibly get for a full frame camera is a 1200 millimeter lens from Canon. And that thing will set you back about half a million quid. But the sensor in this camera is not a full frame sensor. In fact, it's not even a crop sensor camera. It has a sensor size of one to 2.3 inches. So the sensor in this camera is tiny by comparison to the DSLRs. So while it might have an effective focal length of 24 to 2000 millimeters, but the actual physical focal length of this lens is only four millimeters to 357. The point is that that sensor is basically trying to make what's coming through the lens five times bigger. So while the sensor in that camera is 16 megapixels, the actual image quality that you're going to get off it is gonna be absolutely nowhere near a DSLR. Now that's not to slate that particular camera, all bridge cameras and compact cameras fall foul to this same thing in their marketing. They will quote you the equivalent focal length as in the field of view that you can see, but the actual physical focal length of the lens is a lot, lot shorter. 
Now this is worth bearing in mind if we think back to when we talked about depth of field in episode 2, whereby we discussed that that depth of field and that shallow background is created by having as big a physical opening within the lens as possible, and that the aperture is a ratio of the focal length to the physical size of the opening. So a longer focal length lens but with the same aperture ratio as a wide angle lens is going to have a physically bigger aperture opening. For example, let's go back to the original 50mm on an APS-C camera. So, a 50mm lens on an APS-C camera gives you 80mm of view, whereas an 80mm lens on a full frame camera gives you an 80mm field of view. Now, if these two setups are used at the same aperture, let's say f2, then the 50mm lens with the f2 aperture means you have a physical opening of 25mm whereas the 80mm lens on a full frame camera at f2 is going to give you a 40mm opening. So you have a 40mm aperture versus a 25mm aperture, but both lenses are giving you the same angle of view. Therefore, this lens is going to give you a shallower depth of field than this lens, and as such, a more blurred background than this one. The P900, when it's set to an equivalent focal length of 80mm, isn't actually at 80 millimeters. It's only actually at 14 millimeters. Now that lens doesn't even go down to f2, but for argument's sake, let's say it did. So a 14 millimeter physical focal length at an aperture of f2 only gives you an aperture opening of seven millimeters versus the 40 millimeters from the actual full frame camera. Therefore, as you reduce the size of the sensor, the depth of field that you get is going to become narrower and narrower. That, that's not to say that small sensor cameras are the devil and nobody should buy them. What I'm trying to say is that if you have the intention of trying to take photographs with a blurred out background, it becomes harder and harder to do that as you increase the crop factor of the camera. So the bigger the sensor, the easier it is to get a more blurred out background. Larger sensors do inherently have their own problems. Not only are the sensors more expensive to make, but because the lenses have to be designed to project the image wide enough to cover that larger area, the lenses themselves have to become physically bigger. So a lens of any given focal length designed to fit a full frame camera is going to be physically bigger than a lens of the same focal length designed for a crop sensor camera. Also, if you're trying to take photographs of things far in the distance, that crop factor can actually help. For example, if you wanna take a photograph of something far away and you need the equivalent field of view of a 300 millimeter lens, then using a full frame camera, you are going to need a 300 millimeter lens. That looks a little something like this. However, if we're using a crop sensor camera, because we have that crop factor, to get an equivalent focal length the same as a 300 millimeter lens, we only actually need more like 200 millimeters of physical focal length, which is more like this. So that's it for this episode, guys. We now know Cameras come with different size sensors and the size of the sensor affects the actual focal length of a lens and what we can see. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at what the difference is between the RAW file format and the JPEG file format. Hopefully, I'll see you there.